Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? Praise God. It's certainly a good night to die. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies, grace, and faithfulness. Isn't it awesome to be alive at such a time as this? I mean, think about it. We're alive at this time, at this specific season of all the things that are going on. The escalation of everything in preparation of things coming to an end, but to a new beginning. We are the generation of the return of the Lord. We are the generation of the return of the Lord. Now, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? All of our forefathers went they through, and then everything was prepared for me and you. We are the generation of the return of the Lord. Don't let that leave you. Because when that begins to leave you, you begin to compromise your identity. We must stand firm on who we are and where we are. Because the enemy right now is angry, on the loose, and is a roaring lion. But is roaring nothing compared to our dad. <laughs> we are in a tremendous battle, probably a climax that will get increased more and more. And again, you see it physically in the governmental and the and things that are going on in the earthquakes and the famines and the destructions of certain things. Like everything is shaken that can be shaken. Everyone say, God chose me. I didn't choose him. But now I choose him. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> we have been talking about final delusion, and then uh, I want to go into a deeper area here, and I want to talk about entering the final delusion. Entering the final delusion. What is delusion? Delusion is a deceptive belief or an impression. It's a deceptive belief or an impression that is firmly maintained. <laughs> Despite of the contradiction or conviction of the reality of truth. You know, I'll say it again. Delusion is a deceptive belief or impression that is firmly maintained despite of the, con the contradiction or conviction of the reality of the truth. Delusion. It always starts with deception and then enters delusion. Without deception, you don't enter delusion. See, you're able to battle off sometimes deception. You can come out of it. But if you stay in it, you end up into a delusion. So your belief system, if it's flawed, so is your perception of things. How you see things is different. Because one of the things about deception, its purpose is to blind us. If deception can blind us, then it can prevent us from the true agenda that's behind the deception. And in this, if we stay there long enough, we become into a place of delusion where you perceive things, see things, and believe things that are incorrect. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, In verse 9, we spoke this already. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.9. Entering final delusion. 
It says the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan. Real simple. You know how many people don't believe in demons? Many. Do you know how many Christians don't believe in demons? Many. It's incredible to me. You know how many preachers don't believe in demons? Many. And they're out there preaching the Bible. And they are carriers of them. Those are called hirelings or wolves in sheep's clothing. It says, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power. Signs and lying wonders. Why? Its purpose is for what? Deception to put people into a delusion. And with all unrighteous what? Deception. Among those who what? Perish. Because they did not receive the love of the truth. In other words, they rejected it. That they might be saved. You know how many people rejected rescue? Because their belief system, they're now in the delusion state, and their belief system is flawed. So that means their perception is flawed. So everything that they see or they hear is always twisted. So when you try to say something to them, you may be speaking something pure, truth, and loving. They'll turn it around and twist it towards hatred or it's a lie. Because they've been actually taken over. Remember, the battle is where? In the mind. It's in the thoughts. In verse 11, it says, For this reason God will send them what? Strong delusion, because they've rejected it, the truth. They've rejected the escape. So God is going to allow them to stay in this deception where it will build to strong delusion. Does everybody get that? And they will believe the lie. They will believe the lie of the devil, of Satan's kingdom, through agendas. Agendas. Why? What is the agenda? In other words, what's the plan? Well, Satan's plan is to destroy, to come to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. To create his own race and destroy all humans. So that his race exists on the planet. That's his purpose. But he'll use all humans as possible by sending his spirits in them so that they become sinful, so that they reject God's law, they reject his love, and they become lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And they live a life disconnected from God, the Holy Spirit. See, the Spirit of the Lord... That's where the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord, where he's at, there's freedom. Why? Because he's called the Spirit of Truth. So they're actually rejecting the Spirit of Truth. Now, what is the most unforgivable sin? Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So what the enemy tries to do is get an individual into deception, maintain that deception long enough till they come into delusion, then they fall into a strong delusion where they're actually rejecting, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And that is unforgivable. So if a person dies in that state of being, he does not go to heaven. Does everybody get this? Hallelujah. So it says here, Again, in verse 11, for this reason, God will send them strong delusion. In other words, he's going to allow them to go into that, that they believe the lie, the, the, the lie of the agenda, the lie of the enemy, and, for, uh, and, and that they all may be what? Condemned to, who do not believe the truth but had pleasure in what? Unrighteousness, because they believe the agenda, which is an unrighteousness agenda. In other words, they've, been, they've got into a place where now they are embracing lawlessness they're embracing lawlessness you and i were out there doing the same thing before bc we were embracing lawlessness amen and when we justified reasoned and lied about everything we were in a survival mode self-protecting mode 
not a surrendering mode, not trusting mode. We live for us, and that was it. These individuals live for self, even though they call themselves Christians. Because if they are truly living for Christ, they would see the truth. They've been disconnected. Remember, the enemy tries to disconnect us from the spirit of truth. If he can disconnect us from the spirit of truth, other spirits come, imitate the spirit of truth, who's called the familiar spirits, and then they mislead individuals. Galatians chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. Galatians chapter 3. I think it's Galatians 3. Yeah, it's Galatians 3. Verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Oh, foolish Galatians, who is what? Who is what? Bewitched you. That you should not obey the truth. In other words, who tricked you with witchcraft? Who tricked you with witchcraft? Do you know that assigned to every human being are demonic forces? There's witches that are praying against you. Believe me, I've seen them in my life. My wife has seen them. She knows. They, they would come to my house, too, until they finally realized that they weren't penetrating the blood of Christ. I've seen many of them. They tried to cause me to fall in all kinds of stuff, pretended to be tongue-speaking Christians and everything, and they were witches. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? And let me tell you that you should not obey the truth. They use accursed items. They use things. They, they try to get a piece of your hair. They try to get a piece of your clothing, and they pray over it. I'm going to give you a quick scenario. I was a baby in Christ. Believe me, when you're a baby, they don't want you to, they, they come against you as quick as possible so you don't grow. I'm only about a month old in Christ. And already there's a woman, uh, there's a car on the side of the road. There's a Bible on the, on the dashboard. And I went to go help, and the person didn't have a phone or whatever. And so this, I said to this woman, come to my house. You can call your husband or whatever. And he came over, and she said, you know what? The Lord told me to help you learn the Bible because I was praying about it. I said, Lord, I need to know the Bible. And the Lord kept saying, you got the Holy Spirit. I said, okay, I'll teach you everything. You don't need anyone. Well, here's this woman telling me that the Lord has sent her to help me learn the Bible. And she just said, look, let's do a point of contact. And she gave me this metal bracelet. It had turquoise stones on it. And she says, if you wear that, then I'll have communication with you, and I'll know what's what. And I said, oh, okay. Like a moron. But I was a baby. So I put this bracelet on. And as soon as I put that bracelet on, there was a disconnect with the spirit. And I sensed it. I'm thinking, what the heck is this? Make a long story short, I'd be praying in the morning and the stones would be popping off of this bracelet. And I went to the Lord. I kept crying about the, crying to the Lord. And this girl would call me and say, look, and I know you're struggling, this, that, whatever. And she'd come over praying in tongues, some kind of tongue. Until one day she said, to, she put her hand on my leg and said something about whining a child. She said, you're out of here. And I took that bracelet off. And I threw it because the Lord kept telling me, be weary the woman with lashes or something in the silver. And I finally got it. When I took that bracelet off, I saw an S in the bracelet. And it didn't mean Sam's Club. Amen? And when I threw that bracelet off, 
there was a reconnect. I was able to see the face of the Lord because wearing that bracelet, I could not. She, she was trying to put a curse on me and trying to put me into it so that I, the blinders were there. But I kept crying out to the Lord and kept, in other words, even though the, the things I was going through, but, and I kept saying, why, why, why? But you know what? What training that was. A four-week-old baby in Christ learning these things. God had a plan. See, so I want you to know that because they use these things, people don't even know that they've already got them. They don't even, they don't even really know yet that they've been disconnected from the Holy Spirit. So they're accepting these agendas that are from Satan's kingdom, doctrines of what? Demons, and don't even know it. And they believe that they're Christians and that they're good people and they're going to heaven. But they're not going to. See, ignorance is no excuse. There was a mandate. He said, seek the truth. Seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be what? Added to, but seek his kingdom and his righteousness. So you, every human being is required to seek so anybody that doesn't seek is not going to make it because they're ignorant. Does everybody got it? They won't make it. They'll be left behind. Tribulation. And there's no such place as purgatory, so there's no waiting room. Hello? Hello? So he says, he says here again, O foolish Galatians, O foolish Americans, who has bewitched you to believe in the doctrine of demons produced by the prophets of Baal through the media and the political parties? Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the what? Truth. Now the truth is not just knowledge, it's a person. See, but they don't get that, and they're not going to get it. They may get it right before they get sentenced to hell. They're going to know everything because everyone's going to stand in the presence of God and know his love, his power, and his truth and know who he is. And then he's going to say, depart from me. I don't know you because you practice lawlessness. See, that's called love. People don't realize, they think just God's some kind of wimp. He's a righteous, justice creator. He didn't take no garbage even when he put on flesh and came into the world. He called them devils, hypocrites, said you're the children of the devil. He let them all know what was going on. He rebuked them. He even told, get behind me. He cast out devils. That was a third of his ministry. Preaching the gospel was a third of his ministry. And healing the sick was a third of his ministry. But again, casting out demons. If people would just read the word of God and believe that this is true, their lives would be different. Their lives would be different. Again, one of the things that the enemy wants to first do is steal your identity. He wants you to compromise your identity, who you are. O oh, Galatians, who's bewitched you that you should not follow the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the what? Hearing of what? faith. Are you so foolish? In other words, he was very nice. Are you so stupid? Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect in the flesh? Wow. In other words, they got disconnected. The enemy's focus is to disconnect. Why? So he can fulfill his agenda. Bewitched is to be deceived. Tricked into a false belief system or agenda by satanic witchcraft, by a curse to put a person into a trance. Now that trance keeps them. In other words, in this trance, the only thing that they're looking at is themselves. They can't see anything further. 
They can't see things through. In other words, they can't hear correctly because they lost the voice of God, and they can't see correctly. In 1 Samuel 15, Entering final delusion. And we are there. 1 Samuel 15. Oh, happy days. Verse 22, so the prophet Samuel said to Saul, who was king, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in, in what? Obeying the voice of the Lord. Uh, I, I want you to know that Saul lost the voice of God. And when he lost the voice of God, he could only rely on Samuel to tell him. So when Samuel wasn't available, Saul would do whatever it took to please man. Why? Because he was disobedient to the Lord. The Lord gave Saul multiple opportunities. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. For what? Rebellion. Rebellion is as the sin of what? Witchcrafts. So you got to understand that witchcraft promotes rebellion. And stubbornness. Did you ever try to tell somebody the truth? But they're so stiff-necked, stubborn, you can't penetrate. No matter what you do, you know what? they got to run the course then. They're going to believe their systems. They're going to react to everything you say through violence, through cursing, through whatever. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. That's authority. That's a position. And many Christians, which God doesn't see them as Christians, but they call themselves Christians, have lost their position of authority and dominion. And they've been taken captive and they've entered the final delusion. In Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Is everybody okay? Sure is quiet tonight. Oh, happy days. Yeah. In verse 1, Ephesians 2, 1. Hallelujah. Let's speak this together. And you he had made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Now, according to the course of this world. In other words, according to the agenda of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. Now, Grab hold of this because these are voices. The prince of the power of the air is voices. They're demonic frequencies that speak to people. Who's the ruler of this earth? Satan's kingdom. This, and it says here, this is what the spirit is working. The spirit who now works in the sons of what? Disobedience. Why? They're rebellious. Why? They're under the curse of of witchcraft. Why? Because they've agreed with the doctrine of demons. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the what? Desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Powerful. They're under the cursed spell or trance of witchcraft because of the agreement of the agenda or or the doctrine of Satan's demon forces 
to mislead and cause blindness so that they reject the truth. They become children of wrath with rebellion, disobedience, being set up for the slaughter, entering the final delusion. Again, this is demonic frequency, the prince of power of error, causing, the, causing them to embrace lawlessness and thinking it's okay. In other words, they approve the bloodshed and the murder of children. I mean, that alone you'd think would say, don't you think there's something wrong? Just that to approve an abortion. Remember, life is right at conception. It's at conception. Even the Jews count conception the day of birth. Because they know. When we were conceived, that was life. It's not after so many whatever. I don't know all the terminology and that stuff. Life is life. That's it. Light is life. Hello. Egg, seed, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen? Praise God. Second Corinthians 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. In verse 3. For though we walk in the physical, we do not war according to the physical. It says flesh, but it says it should be physical. Because we know what flesh represents. Amen. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, but they are mighty in God for what? Pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? A memory lie. It's a lie. Those labels that were spoken over our lives when we were children and agreed with them, that agenda of the devil that we agreed with, it's called a stronghold. And it says this, so we're to be casting down the arguments and every high thing that exalts of itself against the knowledge of God or the agenda of God. So there's a battle between agendas, isn't there? We're to fulfill the agenda of God. That's called fulfilling the will of God. So there's the will of Satan, which is his agenda, and there's the will of God, which is his agenda. It says we're to be casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge or the agenda of God, bringing every what? Thought. Every thought. And to captivity to the obedience of Christ. In other words, is this thought agreeing with the agenda of Christ? If it isn't, we're to be rejecting it and casting it out. Other than that, when you agree with it, you just curse yourself. And if you don't turn from it quickly or repent for it quickly, that deception will stay there till you fall in delusion. And you'll be a fighter for yourself instead of a fighter for Christ's presence. It says here, verse 6, being ready to punish all disobedience when you're what? Obedience is fulfilled. What is your obedience? To acknowledge it. To recognize it. Do not, do you look at the things according to the outward appearance? If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ, let him again consider this in himself, that just as he is in Christ, even so we are Christ. In other words, so many people are knowing by the fruits from the physical. They're judging by the physical. They're judging the person and not they don't have the eyes to judge the agenda. In other words, what's the motive? What's the agenda? What's the purpose behind what an individual is doing? That's called discerning of spirits. Why? The word says test the spirits, whether they are of God or not. Well, every demon's got an agenda. Oh, the battle, the controlled thoughts. Reject the agendas of God and accepting the agenda of Christ. We must remove all of that. We must take dominion over that. And we must expose it. Doesn't the Bible say to expose darkness? 
not promoted. But people don't know they're promoting darkness because they've been under the trance or under the curse. They're blinded. And 2 Corinthians 4. Many of us have relatives like that, people that we've known. People that have been a part of the congregation have gone back out. They're under the curse. They're blinded. And, and refuse, reject. Hallelujah. You know, the enemy has an agenda. You know, it, it may have started off as God's agenda, then the enemy infiltrated like the 12-step program. This 12 step started off as a God agenda. Then the enemy took it over. Now they're worshiping light bulbs and doorknobs. With a snap. That's the true light. No, that's wrong. They used to have clergy, men and women of God, in the meetings, they would confess their sins for one another with one another. They would lay hands on them and they'd get baptized in the Holy Spirit. That was called the spiritual awakening. I, oh yeah. They don't worship speakers. There's only one God and one truth. I have a spiritual awakening. Really? Yeah. I worship my car or whatever it is. I mean, they're worshiping goofy things. People worship jewelry. They spend more time cleaning their car and polishing it. And they're idols. They're emotional idols. Don't even realize it. On my way to church every Sunday or Tuesday or whatever, I see all these people all around. They're out there cleaning their cars in the morning, then cutting their lawns. You know, it's like, get your blessed assurance and fellowship, man. But they're not. I used to be that way. My family was that way. You kidding me? Sunday? You know what was church? NFL. That's where I went to a congregation of NFL. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Verse 1, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves in every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel, the message of the truth, the agenda, amen, is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. They are what? Perishing. So it's amazing to me where a person calls himself a Christian, but the, reject, I don't need the word. I don't believe the word. Of, I don't believe the Bible. You know what God says? What right do you have to declare my name? How dare you? Do, you think that I'm just like you. But at the end, he says, I will tear you in pieces. Well, that's a loving God. Yep. He's a judge. He's the one that sentences and sets the execution. He's the one that prospers and blesses and rewards. But we bring everything on ourselves and what we do. He's already said it all. He doesn't have to do anything more. He's got it all in the call, the book of remembrance. And the moment you give up your last breath and stand before him, that's when he brings it all up. But the, the thing is, is if you truly have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and Dad, he's before you all the time. He's before you all the time, no matter what you're doing. He's there. Yeah, okay. What do you want to do? What do you want me to do? Is this pleasing to you or displeasing to you? If that's called relationship. Without that, that's no relationship. That's not a relationship. But even if our message is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, whose what? Whose minds, thoughts, the God of this age 
has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, lest the light of the message or the agenda of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. In other words, they are what? Perishing. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. Wow. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge or the agenda. When you see knowledge, it is agenda of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Look at this. We are what? Hard pressed. Oh, man, we're hard pressed. Let me tell you, the pressing is harder now than it was. And it's going to get harder. If you think it's going to get easier, you're wrong. It's going to get harder. But I'm going to tell you, you've got to stay connected and stay closer. That's why he said, I've put a, I set a pavilion. I, I have a place called a secret place, a shelter for you. That's under his wings, under his protection. Devil can't touch it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. So the ruler of this world, who is Satan, the presence, the prince of power of air, who blinds individuals from following and believing the agenda, the gospel, called grace, which is God's plan of escape, so they will not escape. Isaiah 14. That's why the word believe means to follow. That's why people call themselves a believer, but they're following the wrong thing. They're going to find out if they're still alive when you and I are out of here. Isaiah 14, verse 12. Everybody there? Let's speak it. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Now, Lucifer is also known as Satan, the devil, the dragon, amen, serpent. O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. <laughs> Here's the Lord's response. Yeah. You're going to hell, homie. To the lowest depths of the pit. Verse 16. And those of you who See you, will gaze at you, and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook the kingdoms? How did he do this? With a, de a, ge a deceptive agenda. Does everybody get this? He deceived them. He lied to them. He's known as the father of lies. He can't tell the truth. Who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners, his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house, but you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like a garment of those who are slain, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit like a corpse trotting underfoot, you will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The road of uh, evildoers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his what? Now, now grab hold of this. Who are his children? Everyone that's not in Christ. 
everyone that's not following Christ, everyone that's not following the agenda and the doctrine of Christ Jesus is a child of the devil. So you're either God's or you're the devil. That's light or darkness. Amen? Prepare slaughter for his children. This is coming. Why? Because they're caught in the final delusion. Because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with its cities. Wow. Satan and his children and his doctrine. Look at, he go to Hebrews 13 for a second. Hebrews 13. In verse 8, verse 8 and 9, let's speak it. Is everybody there, Hebrews 13? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he doesn't change, although people, see, the enemy gets into people's head and, and believes that Jesus has changed. That's why some people don't believe that Jesus can still heal. Hello? And sometimes they don't, they don't believe that he baptizes in the Holy Spirit. All oh, those tongues isn't for us. All oh, the, the gifts of the Spirit aren't for today. It was only for the apostles. No, nothing's changed. Just your doctrine. <laughs> he says, verse 9, look at it. Do not be carried about with the various and strange what? doctrines. Why? Because he's saying, I'm the same. Nothing's changed. But you're going to hear many doctrines of demons that are going to try to sway you and tell you this is okay and that's okay when I said it isn't. Don't be carried away with various and strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established by grace. Now what's grace? God's plan of escape, which is the doctrine. Not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. Wow. Revelation 18. Revelation 18. In verse 21. Everybody there? Let's speak it. It says, Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, thus saying, With violence, the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found anymore. Now I want you to grab hold of something because a Babylon is a political system, governmental system. He said this, The sound of the trumpets, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard and you anymore. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you anymore, and the sound of the millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. The light of the lamp shall not shine in you anymore. And the voice of the bridegroom, which is who? Jesus. And the bride, which is us, shall not be heard in you anymore. Why? Because we're going to be out of here. Hmm. For your... For your merchants were great men of the earth. For by your what? Your sorcery, your curses that have put people in a trance, your witch bewitchments, your witchcraft. For by your sorcery all the nations were what? Deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints, and all were slain on the earth. Again, Babylon is a political agenda of those that support support, promote, and vote for their agenda. They have lost a sight and the voice of truth, the voice of God. Again, they've taken up a false belief system. Now the perception is different. They do not see. They do not hear correctly. In Romans 8, they're actually fighting for their own death and don't know it. They're fighting 
to lose their life and don't even know it. That's pretty sad. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore no, no what? Condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the what? The flesh. Now, what is the flesh? That is the agenda of doctrines of demons. Amen? But according to the Spirit, which is the doctrine of Christ. For the law, which is a doctrine of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. For the law could not do in it that we, it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, everyone say righteous requirement. So there is a requirement, isn't there? Of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the doctrines of demons, amen, or the flesh, but according to the doctrine of Christ Jesus. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Wow. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, so to be fleshly minded or carnal minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Why? Because the carnal fleshly mind hates God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot what? Please God. God, the works of the flesh, hmm. by doctrines of demons, agendas. Again, there are many of these doctrines of demons, socialism, communism, Nazism, leftism, even libertarianism, because they're not set forth on Christ. Anything that compromises ain't God. Does everybody understand that? It's either the doctrine of Christ Jesus all the way through or not. That's why he warned us, the works of the flesh. Why? Because people think it's a doctrine of demons. And that doctrine of demons is in people's minds now. Compromise. Compromise their identity. Think that they can do whatever and make it home. Oh, the Lord loves me. Yes, he loves you so much he's going to kill you if you keep that up. That's not relationship, is it? Relationship is he's in front of you, he's with you, and everything you do. There's a communication. Lord, does this please you? Does this not please you? Do you want me to do this? Is it time for this? That's, that's relationship. I mean, he's God. I think I'd rather have counsel from him than anyone else. Hallelujah. Romans 1. Remember he said he took the foolish things. He took us children that were under darkness, pulled us out, and turned us into trophies for him. Amen? I wasn't born again this way. I mean, I wasn't born this way. I was born again this way. Amen? I didn't come out of my mother's womb going, hallelujah. I came out of the mother's womb saying other things, which I'm not going to repeat here. Romans 1, verse 18. Let's speak it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in what? Unrighteousness. This is the wrath of God. So this is beyond the conviction, the chastening, and the judgment. This is the wrath. Why is it the wrath? Because they're caught in the final delusion. That's where the wrath comes to. And remember, many have entered that final delusion already. And God is trying to rescue them from it. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are what? 
without excuse. So there is no excuse. There's no such thing of ignorance is not going to prevent you from going to hell. I didn't know. Too bad. You should have known. Should have searched it out. Don't you remember? But you know what? Everyone knows. Doesn't the word say that the gospel will preach to every person on the earth? Amen. So somehow, some way, somebody is going to have an opportunity to know the truth. And if that person lives in a remote place where nobody can get to him, God will. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and foolish hearts were what? Darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the incorruptible God to an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping, there, creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their own bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 3. Second Timothy 3. Again, the word speaks for itself. The word speaks for himself. Listen, we should be so excited and happy because we've, we've escaped the final delusion. At least I hope so. <laughs> and think about that. You've been rescued. Now stay rescued. <laughs> Second Corinthians 3 verse 1. What's it say? But know this, that in the last days, what's well, going to happen? Perilous times, troublesome times will come in the last days. Are we there? Yeah. Why? Because there's going to be more and more deception, more and more doctrines of demons, more and more persecution, more and more hatred, violence, more and more lies, more and more lust, more of everything. Even the anointing, thank God. See, so we've got to stay connected because we've got to have more. We've got to have the oil that burns the fire so we can stay connected. And he says this, for men will be lovers of who? Themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying his power, and from such people do what? Turn away. Why? Because he's turned away from them. These individuals are all under the doctrines of demons. They're in great deception. And many of them have already fallen into the final delusion. You know, you may have friends out there that really, uh, you call friends, but they're really not your friends. Because if they're not unplugged from the world, they're your enemy. And they're under the final delusion. Because the deception has been going on for such a long time, man. And if they keep rejecting, 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 they're going to maintain and enter that final delusion and stay there. We got to do everything we can. Amen? That's what this is about. Number one thing is pray. You got to pray for these individuals. Because speaking to them isn't going to work. you got to pray for them. Forgive them, bless them, and let the coals of fire come on them. Amen? Hopefully they get baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
2 Timothy 2. Everybody there? Praise God. Just turn your page back one. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from the latter, latter what? Latter agendas. Latter agreements. Your past. He will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful loss, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. You'll know them. Why? Because they will follow the doctrine of Christ. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they will generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God will perhaps grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses, in other words, receive their sight and hearing again, and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will, which is what? His agenda. Amen? We're not going to close at Second John. Cleanse yourself from doctrines of demons. Second John. Is everybody there? In verse six. This is love that we walk according to his what? His commandments. His, what's his commandments? His agenda. Amen. This is the commandment that has, as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to who? Yourselves, that we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a what? Full reward. So he's warning us. Be careful you don't fall into deception. Be careful you don't stay there and fall into final delusion because you'll lose everything. It sure blows the doctrine of one saved, always saved, don't it? Verse 9. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. I'm going to say that again. Whoever transgresses and does not, have, does not abide, does not obey, does not follow, does not express, does not live, does not walk according to the doctrine of Christ does not have God. Now, does that mean that we approve abortion? No. Sexual perversion? No. Then why are so many people that are proclaiming to be Christians rejecting the doctrine of Christ Jesus? It's amazing to me. Why? Because they've been taken captive. They're under the witchcraft. They're under the spell. They're under the curse. They can't see and can't hear. They're still doing their own will. They live by emotions. Well, it feels good, so it must be God. Well, I can tell you how many things that felt good and wasn't God, and I'm not going to explain them. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ Jesus does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ Jesus has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him in your house nor greet him. Hello. For he who greets him shares in what? His evil deeds. In other words, he will be judged just the way you are. He, you'll be judged the way you, the, the doctrine is. 
He says, having many things to write to you, I did not wish to do so with paper and ink, but I hope to come to you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. The children of your elect sister greet you. Amen. So again, we are in a time of season right now where it's just, it's escalating. We must be very careful what we agree with, what we approve. Amen? Be careful. And again, you're going to see many people that are caught up in this. They're deceived. They're blinded. Be led by the Spirit of God and how to minister to them. Sometimes the best thing to do is just put a prayer booklet in their hand. And let God deal with them until it's time. Hopefully they'll call you. <laughs> Hopefully something will happen. See, Jesus never came to bring religion. And this is where people talk about, well, I'm very spiritual. Why? Because I read a lot of books. <laughs> That's not about that. Spiritual is not about being spiritual. It's about a relationship with the Creator. Amen? That's what this is all about. If you don't know Him, then you don't know who you are. And then you don't know what pleases Him. And then you'll look for false fulfillments. And you'll be slipping away into the areas of doctrines of demons. Remember, Satan's doctrine is do what you feel like. Do what you feel like. Well, I think I'll party tonight. I just feel like it. Tomorrow I'll repent. Ain't going to work. You're under the curse. Because repent means to turn away and stop. Turn away and stop. Not stopping is no forgiveness. Amen? And if a person stays in that condition long enough, he will blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And there is no forgiveness in that. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the word that's been imparted in us tonight, the seed grow and bear fruit for your glory. And that you would give us the wisdom and knowledge and discernment so that we can see the attack of the enemy and step away, step away avoid, and expose all deception and delusion in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed.